It's day 222 of being a girl. I'm in Washington, D.C., and I'm going to the White House to speak to the President of the United States. <gasps> right, and so to be absolutely, completely, and 100% clear, this was always the intention. This is it. Remember how we, I said that Dylan is very obviously an industry plant? <laughs> We're not really sure exactly what the end game is here. If he's just meant to be like a marketing tool, which day one eighty-eight of being, being a woman, a woman. Ah! marketing tool, which he clearly is. I mean, that much is clear. It's day one eighty-eight of being a woman. That's right. I said woman because I'm about to go speak at the For Forbes, 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 Forbes Power Women Summit. 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 Woo! Woo! I still get so much criticism for calling myself a girl and not a woman. And even though I already addressed that in earlier videos, but for me, the word girl feels great because I never got to be one growing up. So I'm going to keep calling myself a girl. Hope that's okay. Love ya. But I just became so obsessed with Beyonce's new album, Renaissance. And the first song is literally called I'm That Girl. So if Beyonce can call herself a girl, so can I. And the point is moot. And I do kind of feel like that girl right now, TBH. Um, here's the fit. I wore pants. I'm feeling very sexy. Um, and at the summit today, I'm speaking with my friend Barbie Ferreira about the social media to mainstream industry pipeline. And I'm just honored to be in the room with these ladies, let alone speak. But the fact that I am just shows that we're heading in the right direction. Power posing with Barbie before we speak. that once I started transitioning, I knew that I wanted to tell my story in sort of a unique way. I hadn't seen a lot of people start from the very beginning. From the very beginning. But my understanding was that this is how you've always been. So would it the beginning be the day that you were born? The logic remains circular and around and around it goes. And I said, well, I'm going to try to do that. And the craziest part is now all of these things are happening that I didn't even know were dreams. What do we think? Yes. How did you feel? I feel amazing. I think it went really well. Okay. Love ya! This is the ultimate end game. He is going to be the spokesperson for the White House. And he's going to be the spokesman not just for trans women or trans identifying people no he's going to be the spokesman for women so now we have men who will be making policy decisions on behalf of women who will be standing in as our voice once again we have male handlers choosing and deciding what it is that women need rather than listening to women actual women you know that phrase i fear i may have girl boss too close to the sun no Never. Well, that's how I feel today because I get to sit down with Joe Biden. Yeah, there's one thing we know about Biden. He's definitely always cared about LGBTQ rights, right, guys? Do you support gay marriage? No. Barack Obama nor I support redefining from a, from a civil side what constitutes marriage. We do not support that. That is basically a decision to be able to be left to the face and people who practice their face, the determination, what you call it. He used his radio address uh, yesterday and tomorrow in the Rose Garden to talk about a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. You know, think about this. The world's going to Hades in a handbasket. We are desperately concerned about the circumstance relating to uh, avian flu we don't have enough vaccines we don't have enough police officers and we're going to debate the next three weeks i'm told gay marriage a flag amendment and god only knows what else 
I can't believe the American people can't see through this. We already have a law, the Defense of Marriage Act, where we've all voted, not where I voted and others said, look, marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. Nobody's violated that law. There's been no challenge to that law. Why do we need a constitutional amendment? Marriage is between a man and a woman. What's the game going on here? So now that we've established that Joe Biden doesn't actually care about the humanitarian issue of LGBT, so why has he latched on so hard onto this trans agenda? What about gender ideology does he see value in backing and pursuing so aggressively? Because there is value in it. There is a reason why they're investing this much time and this much of their platform into championing the trans cause. Make no mistake, it is not by accident. It is not clearly because we care about trans, you know, the people involved. There is a usefulness to them and pay attention. And now this news, and I get to ask him a few questions surrounding trans issues in the United States and talk to him about my transness. And I, I really just want to represent my community the best that I can. I'm sure they're the ones who groomed him because the fact of the matter is Dylan is a very benign person for trans. He doesn't look like your uncle Larry who now goes by Petunia, who, you know, is wearing a little nighty and is shopping at Victoria's Secrets and is making all of the sales associates uncomfortable because he wants to be fit with a panty and bra set with his balls hanging, right? So this is what he's meant to do. And again, as we've gone through listening to Joshua Moon and the Kiwi Farms takedown with Keffels, as we see, and as Joshua Moon said, and it is exactly the truth, the trans issue is a useful idiot because it gives the White House, it gives the United States access to greater control over the Internet. Anybody who was around my age, I'm 34 years old, I was born in 1988, remembers that prior to what the internet is now, remembers a time when internet 2.0 came. Prior to that, it was like a wild west. After 2.0, there was far more infrastructure on the internet. It was, prior to that, it was like a no man's land Anybody could come. There was really no rules or way to regulate the internet. Now they've made it so that you have to use certain, you know, um, if you're for certain search engines. For example, Google has a huge monopoly. Even a lot of the other search engines that exist are based off of Google's algorithm or Bing's algorithm, which is, you know, by Microsoft. It is hard to find places to meet because now, as we've even seen with Kiwi Farms, there's a lot of pieces that go into the infrastructure that it takes to creating communities on the internet. No one group can really do everything to be on the internet, protect against DDoS attacks, you know, uh, have the servers necessary. A lot of times you need to contract other companies and those companies could also be ideologically captured. And once they pull their service from you, you, that's it. You're you're turned off. You're tuned out. If people can't access you or know that you exist, you can try to promote in grassroots ways and word of mouth, but you're not going to get the numbers. You're not going to get these huge numbers. Somebody like Dylan Mulvaney, who got seven to eight million followers in, in, in less than a year. It's unheard of. It's insane. And he's the person who's going to be influencing the mainstream. You know, we can have these little, even if we do manage to create these little pockets of communities on the internet, they're going to sniff them out. They're going to hunt them down. They're going to try to take them out. So they have full control over what's being said, full control over the discourse, the flow of information. They can add in their fact checking. All of that with the pandemic and COVID-19 and the fact checking was just a way to test our sensitivity to having our speech monitored. 
They can shadow ban you. I'm sure a lot of us experience during election seasons being shadow banned. We're not allowed to give certain opinions. Twitter can pull your account for whatever reason. Same thing with Facebook. You got to watch what links you share. We're at a point now where we've been dealing with this long enough that all of us self monitor and self censor our own speech. I have to do it for YouTube. Okay, we're all having to self monitor. Um, and this is a way, so the trans thing is a useful idiot for the government to get people to literally hand over their right to speech. Community the best that I can. And you know what, as silly as I am on here, I'm ready to step up and show that trans people, we're not going anywhere. This is what makes him look benign and silly. Like he said, you guys see me as silly, but he's still acting silly. He looks harmless. Oh, and this is why they love bringing up the kids. And that trans kids, they deserve a fighting chance to be their true selves. The, the, the trans housing moms love putting kids in the t-shirt that says, I'm the scary trans person they always warned you about. Because you're like, oh, well, the Jeez, that's not right. That's not. That kid just wants to be himself. Because we've been fed a steady diet of individualism for the past 60 years, 70 years, that tells us that individualism is the most important thing. Since the end of World War II, this idea that collectivism is somehow akin to, to white supremacy, white nationalism. And that the individual is the most important part. That the individual is literally God. You get to decide, you know, the natural law. You get to decide how people should behave as long as you're happy and you're comfortable because personal happiness is the most important thing, right? Never mind doing things for other people. Never mind discovering truth. Never mind being productive or creating new things. It's all about your personal comfort and happiness. They purposely pick these people who seem benign and non-threatening. Okay. Oh my God, I'm running late. Let's go. There's a purpose for that. So then when they tell you that these, oh, these anti-trans people, they want to victimize meek and vulnerable people, you'll believe them. Hey, let's go. And y'all are obviously wondering what I'm going to wear to meet the president. No, I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for everyone when I say we weren't wondering what you're going to wear. We don't. We don't care, Dylan. Here you go. It's the trans flag colors. Cute, right? So heels? Okay, Dylan, you're gonna be great. I love you, let's go. Narcissism is a feature of this movement, not a bug. Come on. Do you think I just knock on the front door? Let's go. Looking for the president's dog. Our queen, love you. I love you. We're about to go. Is there anything in my teeth? Leaving on cloud nine. Hi everyone! I got to pet the dog! I got to pet his dog! I'm still in shock and don't be mad, but I don't get to post any of the footage until after the interview airs on Sunday night, but it's going to be worth it because I can't wait for you to hear everything that we talked about. I left with a lot of hope and optimism, not only for just trans people, but many different topics and the fact that our president has watched Days of Girlhood. I can guarantee you he hasn't watched your god awful series. Uh, he's been briefed on it. Because again, you're a useful idiot. You have a purpose. We're going to explain what that purpose is. And it's not because anybody thinks that what you're doing is cute. It's because you are a tool for them to use to a very different end than what you think. And it's better that you don't understand. They know that. It's better that you think that this is really about trans rights. They, they know that. They're not dumb. This is literally... The, the United States government, the most powerful organization in the world. You think they don't know that? We're going to find out why, why they are dealing with you. It's kind of epic. And I'm not going to lie. I have been, I've been having a rough go of it lately. A lot of darkness. <laughs> Shout out to Sloth Queen. We're like definitely getting under his skin. Sore of being a girl. A crucial part of girl. That's the darkness, which is the truth, which is actually the light. And 
and today was what I needed to keep going. Um, also, if you live in the U.S. and can legally vote, this is going to be one of the most important elections of our lifetimes. So please get out and vote next month. There is so much darkness in this world. Action. Hello, my name is Barbara Chandler. I wish to wish Nicholas Cruz happy birthday. Yay! Please, can you buy Christine Chandler's uh, merchandise to help us pay the mortgage. We and appreciate it. Thank you very much. And where do we buy this stuff from? My eBay. Buy on eBay. Yeah, link below. Thank you. Anything else you want to say? No, that's all. Have a, have a good day. Thank you. Have a, have a good day. Why can't you say have a good day? Have a good day. I mean, sometimes the bad actually outweighs the good. I, I knew that you guys had a good relationship, but I always thought, because uh, I'm not huge on Christery and, you know, whatever, I just thought that the whole Sonnetry franchise was very interesting, and that's how I um, got into you when I was younger, right? But I had, I, I didn't have any idea that Barbara was, um, that Barbara knew I had that sort of relationship. I never got any of those uh, vibes. But um, how did you approach her? Do it and she oh, she did? Really? She made the first move? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh really? Wow, Barbara. <laughs> how, how did she do it, if you don't mind me asking? What was the first move? darkness in this world. I mean, sometimes the bad actually outweighs the good. I think she was partially confused at one point, but but then she came around, obviously. But the, the bad actually outweighs the good. More approaching, but the more approaching that I was uh, doing with her along the way. Right. So she, so she got into it. How was did you? How was the first kiss? You kissed her. How did that feel? Having known this woman for your whole life, how did that feel? Oh yeah, I mean it was simple uh, lip lip lock, lip to lip kiss contact. But yeah, it was actually good and it felt right. When did you start having feelings for Barbara? Well, obviously for you know, well for a long time. I mean I remember even mentioning some time ago in one of the videos that I even had dreams where I had. With her, really? But we have to get in the mud right now, and we're going to clean up some messes that have needed cleaning for hundreds of years, and we've got to protect each other. And I have your back, and I really hope you have mine, and I love you. God bless America. Oh, say can you. Okay, love ya. Yeah, but yeah, that's right. The Oedipus comes. Oh, Oedipus, that's right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, how, how, if you don't mind me asking, I know that's probably personal, you have to answer, but how is the sex? Uh, I'd say it was satisfactory. It took a while, it took a few tries to... It took a few tries, yeah. yeah. She is, she's older. And plus, uh, also, she's very understanding about the whole thing as well. I was direct with her, still direct and with her, I made sure that I... Yeah, obviously, I'm never going to propose marriage to her at all because we're already daughter and mom. Yeah, and mother and daughter. You know, they say there's no there's no stronger bond than a mother and her daughter. Sorry? We've been doing it every third.